Nothing is more respectable than the Pennsylvania Quaker. The veritable pillar of society. <laughs> but the laws uh, in, of the United States about religious freedom were designed for just such people as Quakers. They were individualists. They were uh, far out. And yet today, when uh, you claim in court that you object conscientiously to war, or that you have some peculiar religion with uh, very odd sacraments, they say to you, what church do you belong to that authorizes this? How well established is it? How many members does it have? Can you prove that you were brought up by your parents in this way of life? Because these are the tests of whether your grounds uh, for claiming that you are doing a, a thing as a matter of religious conscience, this is the test uh, for whether you're valid. And thus you're in a frightful double bind. Because if you are accused in court of what is gener generally regarded to be a heinous felony, you know your chances of getting a light sentence are much better if you take a guilty attitude. You plead guilty. You say, I'm so sorry, it was a grievous mistake. I didn't mean to do it. Please forgive me, dear God. You know your chances are better. But if you say, I insist that I did this as a religious act, it is in accord with my conscience that I am not guilty judge will say, your attitude is truculent, and he won't like you, and you're liable to get a more severe sentence. But this story is as old as the hills. It's been going on and on, and we never learn from history. We do the same things over and over again. For example, this, we all uh, have the horrors about the Spanish Inquisition, and how they took Protestants and uh, put them on the rack and thumbscrew and finally burn them at the stake. And we say, oh, we don't do things like that anymore. Oh, we don't? I invite you to consider mental hospitals. The new heresy is not um, of all religious opinions because nobody takes that seriously anymore. The new heresy is of all states of consciousness. And if you have an odd state of consciousness and you try to express it to your family, they start looking at you in a funny way. You say, hey, are you feeling all right? And uh, that's a terrible thing to say to anyone. You know, if you want to, I shouldn't really tell anyone this, but if you want to uh, really bug someone and put a hex on them, all you do is you look at them in a funny way and say, are you feeling well today? And this says, yes, I'm feeling fine. Oh, I just thought you were a bit pale. <laughs> and soon the person will begin feeling all kinds of squeamishness. And it's much worse when you question a person's state of mind. Because it's very easy to test a bodily state. You can take your temperature, pulse, have a urinalysis or something, and the doctor says, there's nothing the matter with you. It sounds a stethoscope on your lungs. You're all right. But when it comes to your mind, everything's very vague. You can get into the most weird, Kafkaesque situations about whether you're sane or not. The moment you're challenged to prove that you're sane, you're on your guard. And immediately the psychiatrist says, why are you so defensive? <laughs> the psychiatry is completely diabolical. Uh, this is almost uh, the more I see of it, the less I think there's any good to be said for it. Uh, it, it is a, a way of bugging people. Uh, if you arrive for your appointment early, you are defined as anxious. If you arrive late, you are defined as hostile. Uh, if you are happy, you are euphoric. If you're not happy, you're melancholic. Uh, if you're afraid of something, you're paranoid. Uh, every conceivable way is devised of putting the patient down. And when you're admitted to a mental hospital, uh, you, you 
You may know all this, but uh, you, you ought to know the law about these things, how it stands. You could be so easily put in a mental hospital, although the only salvation is that the mental hospitals in California today are so crowded and so understaffed that they're not well, wishing to admit anyone. And you really have to be in a state of a screaming meanness to get in, or somebody has to dislike you very much. Uh, but you are deprived of all civil rights. You are no longer considered as a person. You are depersonified in a negative sense. See, there's a higher depersonification when you attain the mystical realization and become one with Because they look at you in a funny way about everything you say. Say, I wonder what he meant. It's a, it's a very difficult situation to be in. Never send anyone to an insane asylum. Do anything but that. Anything. Because that's the trap they get in. And then, of course, because they're understaffed, you're ignored. They, don't, they really don't have time to get around to. I know what the problems are. And even very conscientious psychiatrists in insane asylums uh, just can't get the work done. So how do you get attention? Well, you start that being difficult in the, in the expectation that this will draw attention to you and you'll get some therapy. And uh, that doesn't really work. I'll tell you how to get out of an insane asylum in a minute. But uh, the, the thing is that you try to get attention until they, they construe all the things you do to get attention as being further signs of insanity, of lack of cooperation. Finally, they throw you in a cell where there's nothing left to you but to take shit and throw it at the walls in order to get some kind of attention. And they see, see how far gone he is. Now, the way to get out of an insane asylum is very subtly to flatter one of the psychiatrists. And uh, cooperate with him to the utmost. Not too quickly, but in a sort of gradual way so as to give him the impression that his method of treatment is working in your case. Because he wants to write a paper, to so publish it in a psychiatric journal, showing that a certain method, a certain technique is, is really good. And you will cooperate with that idea, and you'll do everything he tells you, but just in the right, with a certain little subtle resistance to him. Don't, don't, he, he'll immediately spot you as someone who's playing funny business if you cooperate completely. So don't do that. But just gently uh, let it be understood that his therapy is working and they'll release you. Unless, of course, you want to go to an insane asylum just so as to have no responsibility and just get out of the whole mess. I think there are some people who do that. But you see what we've got here in this situation is that having a different state of consciousness or because you experience differently from other people, that's heresy. And that makes everybody else terribly uncomfortable. And so, in you go. 
And then, you see, now, this isn't all. They say, well, this is pretty desperate. God, what are we going to do to help this person? You know, in all the kindness of their hearts, what are we going to do? Well, you can see the inquisitors thinking this problem over, too. This heretic. Do you realize that he's going to be tortured forever and ever and ever because of his beliefs? And they're infectious, they spread, they go to other people who will be tortured in hell forever and ever and ever because of what they believe? What are we going to do? We are reason with them and they don't respond to reason. Well, let's apply a thumbscrew or something, you know, and let's see if that will just make the difference. No? This very stubborn patient. Well, it's a last resort, but we could burn them. Because they might, under the torture of being burned, repent, and therefore escape everlasting damnation. And they did it with the kindest motivation, burned up the heretics. So in the same way, in a modern mental hospital, they say, well, um, we'll try shock treatment. And you know, nothing is more unbelievably clumsy. It works occasionally because the patient realizes that he'd better get out at all costs. <laughs> but by and large, it doesn't. And all it, 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 it is a form of torture. And if that doesn't work, well, they say the only thing is to scrape out the front part of his brain. You know, they put an ice pick through the eye, alongside the eyeball and get it into the front part of the brain and they stir it up. It's called a prefrontal lobotomy. And uh, then the person is a happy moron for the rest of his life. But it's the same situation all over again. And we have above all to watch out in this country for this kind of psychiatric fascism. Very, very dangerous. And the problem about, uh, the, the political problem today is uh, that the right wing in this country is very mixed up. They have, they, they're very opposed to official mental health, mental health programs and all that kind of thing. And they have some good reasons for it. They have also some very bad reasons because they would send them to jail, pronto. The right wing are also um, have a, a lot of opposition to taxation and centralized government, which is a, a kind of um, beginning of anarchism. But uh, they don't mean that. They mean... Uh,
increasingly possible with greater and greater rapidity to feed and clothe and adequately house every single person on Earth. There's no technical obstacle to that whatsoever. And, uh, but you've got to do it by automation. To do enough of it. But when you automate things, you put people out of work. So if they're out of work, they don't have any money. And so they can't buy what the machines produce. So you have huge surpluses begin to pile up. But you can't give them away. Uh, what would happen, you see, if you said, well, um, let's pay the people for the work the machines do. We say that would be going into debt. Where's the money going to come from? Well, the money is uh, originally based on gold. And uh, this is this is the real hocus pocus. Because supposing that uh, gold is rather rare and uh, you can't always find a new gold mine, but yet you're producing millions of tons of butter, milk, wheat, uh, iron, wood, everything you could possibly need. We've got to wait to find a gold mine to get all this stuff into circulation. So the only thing they can do is this. People only go into debt in an emergency. So we increase the national debt, and therefore circulate more and more purchasing power to keep the economy running by having wars. The perpetual state of emergency. We must, the government has to go into debt because we're threatened by the communists, by the uh, whatever, Chinese, Vietnamese, anything, anyone. Just so long as we can say there's an emergency, therefore we can go into debt. But actually going into debt uh, is, is gobbledygook semantically. All you're doing is you're issuing credit based on the actual productive wealth of the, of, of the, of the nation or whatever community is the unit. But people don't understand that, just as uh, several hundred years ago, they couldn't possibly understand that the earth was round, and that if you lived in the antipodes, you wouldn't fall off. And so there's a similar mumbo-jumbo and hocus-pocus about money. Uh, money is, uh, is um, a measure of wealth, like inches or pounds or grams. And uh, when you discover a load of iron ore, you don't have to go and borrow a thousand tons from someone before you can do anything with it. So, in this way then, the culture is so absorbed with verbiage with doctrines in religion, with money in economics, with status in politics, and with all kinds of uh, manipulation of symbols, that we are not in contact in an aware way with the physical world. We are alienated from the physical world. We are fighting it. We are fighting our own bodies. And so, therefore, imaginative young people become aware of this and see the disaster all around them, the terrifying depredations of nature. They see it growing and growing. They see the uh, final achievement of great Western physics as the hydrogen bomb. And they say, it's high time for us to get back to reality. And therefore, naturally, they are accused of um, peddling hallucinations. But who is under a hallucination? Look at it. Recently, Congress passed very strict laws against burning the American flag. And they did it with great fervor and all sorts of patriotic speeches and this, that, and the other. While they are by acts of commission or omission, they are burning up the country for which the flag stands, allowing continued pollution of the atmosphere, of the water, 
ravaging of the forests, destruction of wildlife on a fantastic scale. Oh, yes, that doesn't matter. You can tear the physical territory to pieces just so long as you don't burn the flags. <laughs>